Um, all right. So in terms of COVID news, I mean, many of you probably already know and have seen that COVID numbers are steadily rising, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, we're in a place where the positivity rate in Maryland um, is a little bit above 9%. In DC, it's a little bit harder to get actual numbers because it tends to be lower just because they don't have counties and they're smaller as a state. Uh, but the CDC categorize the, categorizes them into like a medium risk level, uh, which is probably a little bit lower than Maryland, but, you know, we're in the DMV and we're all pretty close to each other. So my recommendation would probably be to, you know, if you're in a small enclosed place, definitely wear a mask, like a train or a bus, uh, even if others around you aren't and it's not required. Uh, if you go on a plane, absolutely wear a mask. If you can wear an N95 mask or a KN95 mask in a situation like that, that's even better uh, than just a regular paper surgical mask. Um, but yeah, I'm open for, you know, any questions that anyone has. I think that we did get, we'll address one question that we got via email um, that Janet sent me uh, about being 60 and having had a booster, their last booster in November of 2021 and whether they should get a second booster. Uh, you know, according to the CDC, it would be yes, because they're over the age of 50, uh, regardless of other comorbidities. You know, the question then becomes, is there going to be another, you know, Omicron specific sort of vaccine that comes out later on this year? I think that's absolutely possible. And getting the vaccine now or the double booster now won't prevent you from getting that one later. So if you are four um, months out at least, uh, I'd say even more so if you're six months or more out from getting your last booster, I would, I would get one with the numbers where they are at now, especially if you don't want to have to, you know, change your lifestyle too much. Um, oh, it says the Novavax. Yeah, so the Novavax vaccine has been approved, but it's still waiting for the CDC's approval. So it's not available to pharmacies yet uh, or providers to, to give it. And I'm not sure how long that will, that'll take. No one knows. Any other COVID questions? Can I unmute and ask an, Yeah. if it's yeah. a question or a remark? Sure. Um, I had my second booster in November. Okay. Okay. Because I'm going to Atlanta at the end of the month, mm -hmm. I just took the second booster, even though Dr. Kogan said wait until fall. So in fall, can I get whatever is coming? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you okay. can get one in the fall. Okay. Um, and yeah, I think Dr. Kogan was saying that more when numbers were a little bit better, but now as this variant wave, uh, you know, it's pretty transmissible and to be able to prevent severe disease, I think it would be, it would be good to get it. Because I'm flying and then I'm attending a large wedding, I thought I should. Oh, yeah, then yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think that it was good that you did that then. Um, okay. And, you know, another thing is Paxlovid, right? So, uh, you know, if you're a candidate for Paxlovid, you at test positive, make sure that you speak to somebody within five days of your symptoms starting so that you can be placed on Paxlovid if needed. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, can you take it if you've taken other vaccines? Yes. So do you think the fall vaccines will provide more protection? Or if you're not you know, the fall vaccines may provide more protection because it's supposed to be more Omicron specific. However, no one knows yet, right? Um, you know, when that may come out or how effective it will be, you know. So in the meantime, we do know this vaccine is very good at keeping people out of the hospital uh, and keeping down mortality. So uh, that's what you would be gaining by getting another booster. Um, Oh, okay. So being around your grandson that was was exposed to somebody who had COVID. It sounds like you're more of like a tertiary exposure. Do you want to, Elizabeth, do you want to unmute yourself and, and talk about that a little bit? Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't think he, my, my grandson has COVID yet. I, I saw him Wednesday, but not yesterday or today, but he probably will get COVID. It was a tiny little three-year-old, you know, nursery school in a tiny little room. And um, 
I guess you'd get it maybe within 48 hours from Wednesday, maybe tonight. But I wondered if I wanted to go see my daughter for her birthday. She's had a very, very bad year on Sunday night. And I just, he could also be getting it Saturday or Sunday. So I told her to get him a PCR test Sunday morning to see if he caught it yet. I, if, if he hasn't ha gotten it by Sunday night, is he not going to get it? Or do you think he still could get it? I'd say it's less likely, usually about four or five days. Uh, if you haven't tested positive, that's that's a good chance that they're probably not going to test positive. Does that mean that some people don't later than that? No, they, they can. Um, is your daughter the same? It's a, is it your daughter's son? Right, right, yeah. Okay, so the grandson will be there. Right, right. Is the comment you're making, okay. Right. Not I, you normally I would stay away from them for a week, but because it's her birthday, I kind of wanted to go see her. So I, I just wasn't sure. You know, I think that everybody has to sort of determine in their individual risk based on, you know, what underlying medical conditions that you may have or your age. But one thing you could do is have him at least do maybe like even a rapid test at home would be good because it would show that even if he were to have COVID and it's not showing up yet on that test, that uh, the viral load probably isn't super high enough to transmit it as of yet. Okay. So I would say if he tests negative that morning on a rapid test, you don't have any underlying medical conditions, you know, I, the risk is a little lower. Right, is thank it you. None? No, but there's no zero risk in anything, right? And I could wear my N95, I suppose. Yeah, and you could wear your mask, which would make you even safer. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, sure. Uh, long COVID numbers are still in the one in five. If you're under 65, if you're over 65, it's one in four, get long COVID. Uh, hospitalizations are going up slightly, but our vaccination rates are in like, I believe the 70 something percentile. So uh, it, it's not as bad as it was previously. Um, someone just under 50 who was boosted last September. Once it's approved um, for people under 50, yes. However, what I, from what I'm hearing, they're not looking to approve a second booster for under 50 without underlying medical conditions, um, like people who are healthy uh, until maybe the fall. So, um, and then we'll just answer one more because I know that we have to go at 215. Do you take Paxlovid right away after you test? Yeah, you want to take it as soon as possible. Um, you don't want to do it five, you have five days to do it. So you have to take it within five days. Um, so as soon as you test positive or you start to have symptoms and you think it's heading in that direction, uh, either reach out to your provider or a pharmacist can uh, give it to you now without a prescription if you meet the criteria. All right, well, great. Those are awesome questions. Uh, take care and be safe out there. Hi, I guess I'm up. Hi everyone. Yes, you are. Thank you. Um, my name is Niall. I'm an occupational therapist and I specialize in fascia. Uh, some of you may have seen me on past um, mindfulness talks. I talk a lot about how the body stores trauma and emotion and how fascia is the key to pain management and also just overall wellness because the more fascias are connective tissue, so the more it's open, the more we're able to flow. So the other things we're doing get in and get to the places in our body they're supposed to go. So today, what I'd like to talk to you about is posture. And I thought a lot about this because this is kind of a last minute uh, decision to come on here, last minute ask. And it occurred to me that this topic is probably pretty primed right now because a lot of us have been in our houses more in the past two, two and a half years than ever before. And so our postures are probably really starting to become very compromised. And by way, um, and the byproduct of that is we end up with more chronic pain. Does that resonate with people? Does that sound true? Yeah. <clears throat> so today I'm gonna talk to you about what you can do just as a little postural hack to kind of reset your posture. Um, and then how you can use that to evaluate where maybe you're feeling tight in your body as a cue for, oh, this is where I need to spend more time. 
But then I'm going to end by showing you all a treatment technique that you can do to treat your own body starting today, specifically your feet. Um, so how many of you would love to learn a treatment technique for your feet? Raise your hand if that feels like, oh yeah, that's totally something I want to address just so I can get a sense. Cool, cool. Some of you who've worked with me have been like, yeah, I want to treat all of it. Good. Okay. Well, let me give you, if, if you're not sure, if you're like, why my feet? Um, let me give you a little bit more of a buy-in. <laughs> all right. So if you look at your body as one complete unit, everything is connected on the inside through your fascial system. Then if something has happened to kind of cause, whether it's a, a trauma to your feet, or if you just have pain in your feet, or just by way of using your feet on a daily basis, your feet start to become more um, solidified. The tissue around the feet start to become more solidified. And then especially as you age, that tissue can really start to get very thickened and dense and dehydrated. Now I wanna show you, um, which I think I can do a little screen share of what your feet look like so that you know what we're gonna be treating. Can everyone see this okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can see this. Yes. Cool, thank you. All right, so what you are seeing here is kind of the base of your body and I'll flip this a little bit so that you can see the underside of the feet here. So raise your hand if you know what this is right here. And it even says on the right hand side of the screen. Yeah. This is your plantar fascia. So when people talk about having plantar fasciitis, they're talking about this huge tendinous ligamentous structure at the bottom of your feet that connects from your heel up to the base of your toes. And it's a large tendinous structure that it's kind of like a, your body's natural shoe. Now, if you were to take this away, underneath it, you can see the musculature. So we're gonna be treating today and the technique I'm gonna show you, we're gonna be treating these tiny muscles that run underneath this large plantar fascia or plantar aponeurosis is the technical term. And the way we're going to be able to access these muscles is through slow sustained pressure on a tiny ball over an extended period of time. So I'm gonna show you the technique today and it's gonna be recorded on here. So if you don't have the tools that I'm going to introduce to you, you can come back to this recording and do this later. Now, if you have worked with me before, you might have the tools, in which case you're welcome to grab them and follow along with me. So if you look at the foot here, you can see there's muscle, muscles that run on the outside. This is the pinky toe side of the foot and muscles that run on the inside. This is the big toe side of the foot. These are the muscles we're gonna be primarily focused on treating because these are the muscles that are responsible for balance. They're the muscles that invert or evert the foot as you're walking. And over time, because of fascial restrictions that build up in the knee and the hip and also in the feet specifically, it can start to cause the knees to bow inward here or flare out, putting more pressure on either the outside or inside on these two muscles. So these are the muscles you want to focus on um, when doing the treatment technique that I'm gonna demonstrate to you now. And I'm gonna show you how to target those muscles specifically using a specific method that allows for slow sustained pressure over time so that not only can you melt past that, um, that plantar fascia, but then you can also start to feel it kind of creep up into the shin or the knee some. Now, before I demonstrate this technique, if you've worked with me before and you have your rad ball set, I'm going to give you a minute to go grab that now, specifically the small ball. And if you have not worked with me before, let me show you what I'm referring to. And I'll put the link in the chat. And Janet, um, if you could pop it into the recording later, then everybody can purchase it. So the rad ball set is a set of three balls that are food grade silicone. Yeah, Monica has hers there. 
They're food grade silicone balls in large, medium, and small. I don't know if you can see the small one, it's a, a little black one. And they're high density, meaning if I squeeze it, it doesn't give very much. Um, the small ball here is perfect for treating the hands and the feet, the, those teeny tiny muscles known as lumbricals. It's perfect for treating those in the, in the hands and in the feet. So I'm just gonna demonstrate the feet today. For this technique, you're going to need both the medium sized ball which is the blue ball and the small ball. So if you have balls like this already that are relatively high density, meaning if you squish them, they don't give a lot and they're about this size. And I apologize, I don't know the exact size right now, but I'm gonna post a link in a minute. Then you can use them to follow along. If you do not have these balls, come back to this recording and practice this technique later. I promise you it will be worth it. So I'm just gonna post in the chat here where you can find the rad ball set. And I'm going to even, yeah. Okay. All right. So before we get into the technique, I'm going to show you another technique. So you're actually going to learn two techniques from me today that you can take with you for the rest of the day today. So I had mentioned at the beginning of my talk that I felt like this was a really relevant topic right now because a lot of our postures are beginning to become compromised by the more stagnant um, way we fill our days lately. Why that matters is as we start to age, our tissue gets more thickened and dense anyway because of fibrosis. That happens as a part of the natural aging process. So as we get older, our oxidative stress levels go up a little bit. Our inflammation gets higher because our cells kind of down regulate and they don't fight off the normal everyday wear and tear. So that's considered a part of the natural aging process. Why that is ends up affecting your posture over time is because of something known as the length to tension discrepancy. So I'm just going to take a minute to show you here with the stocking that I have. So if this stocking represents fascia, and it does kind of look like fascia, it's very um, organized and kind of uniform. And some of you may have seen me do this before. So this looks like a fascial web. And let's say this fascia encases or compartmentalizes your entire body, which it does. So let's say my arm represents your entire body. At the, at the bottom, you have your feet. Right about at my wrist here is your waist, and then your abdomen, your neck is about at my elbow level, and then head is above the elbow. So all the way down this fascial webbing at the very, very bottom, you have your feet. And you're walking around and living your life, and as you get older, you start to have more fibrosis and oxidative stress starts to creep in, and it starts to... Um, solidify down here at the base of your feet where it's already very um, dense tissue anyway, as you saw in the diagram. So this tissue starts to thicken. And what happens is it starts to pull up the fascial system and get, it gets like cordy and kind of knotty and you might end up with some plantar fasciitis down here. But what you end up with here is tension in the knees tension in the hips a little bit. You see how it's overstretched down here, where it's up a little higher, it's nicely organized. Well, if this continues without being addressed, it then starts to pull up higher and higher. That's when you end up with low back stuff and then even neck stuff. And then here, because your head has to look upright, you'll maybe get another little knot in the back of your neck in an attempt to try to keep your head on straight. And then you end up with cranial tension and neck tension. This is what's known as a length to tension discrepancy. The tension here and the tension here is creating an over lengthening and a stretching action. And that begins to show up in your posture over time. And we're going to evaluate your posture in a minute to see if you can feel for some of this tension where the pulling is happening. So that's why we need to do fascial releases at the site of the tension places not where we're feeling the overstretching, which is where the symptoms are, 
but where the actual tension, tension or pulling is. So I can tell you as a clinician, the feet ends up being where a lot of the tension patterns are, but because that's not where we feel it, we focus on the length, the overstretched parts, which tends to be the low back and the neck predominantly. So take your focus away from where you're feeling it because that's the tension or that's the overstretching piece. And now bring your awareness into the tension places in your body. Those are places that are tight because of fibrosis due to aging and chronic repetitive strain, meaning overuse over time. So that's why the feet, that's why we're gonna address the feet today. Do I have your buy-in now or did I have it the whole time and I, I could have spared you all that lecture? <laughs> okay, you needed it anyway, it's good information. Okay, so first let's assess where the tension is in our body. And this is a postural hack that I want you to start to do on a regular basis now. Whenever you're sitting for a long period of time, you're gonna get up and do this postural hack. When you wake up in the morning and you first start your day, you're gonna get up and do this postural hack, all right? So to do this, I'd like to have everyone stand with me now. I'm just gonna move the screen back here. <clears throat> and this will also be a great opportunity to just kinda step away from the screen a little bit. <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do is just shake everything out as fast or as slow as you'd like. So you're always going to do this anytime you, you're getting up from a chair, anytime you're, um, you've been on a long drive and you're getting out of your car, you're just going to stand and slowly just jiggle and shake, look around the room a little bit, orient yourself to your environment. I'm going to take a few slow breaths in and out. And then you're going to do this postural hack. So I'm going to show it to you first and then we're all going to do it together. Step one is you take a slow breath in, raise your eyebrows up, slow breath out, relax your eyebrows down. Let's move my screen here a little. Now tuck your chin slightly to give yourself a double chin. This is really technically called neck retraction. It opens up the back of the neck. Then pinch your shoulder blades together as if you're pinching a pencil behind your back and then palms rotate out. And then lastly, you're going to tuck your pelvis under to bring your belly button more into your pelvis. Soft hips, soft knees. You're kind of sinking down into your pelvis. So it's as if you're kind of coming home a little bit, okay? And this is the position that we take when we do um, Qigong. So if anyone does Qigong, notice you're kind of getting into the Qigong posture. What this also does is it helps you to hit that reset button to come back to yourself. If you're forward because you've been on a screen or if you're really engaged in a conversation, it helps you kind of come back. Now I want you to stay in this position for a minute and just take a few slow breaths and scan for what feels hard. All right. Are there parts about this position that feel like you're having to work too hard? That's the tension or that's the lengthen lengthening action happening where the overstretching is because of the tension points. So the back of the neck, it might feel hard to keep those shoulder blades pinched together. It might feel hard to be, to activate the core. Now walk around a little bit from this place and see if you can soften everything and just breathe. So that's your postural hack, all right? I'll repeat it one more time. It's a slow breath in, your eyebrows come up. A slow breath out, tuck your chin, pinch your shoulder blades, palm facing out, tuck your pelvis, soft hips, soft knees, soft ankles. Then you take another slow breath in. A slow breath out and see if you can relax everything down so it feels more natural. And then you can begin walking and kind of go about your day, okay? So that's the postural hack technique that I want you to start doing as of today. Now I'm gonna teach you how to treat your feet. And to do that, I'm gonna switch the screen so that you can see my feet. Now I'm actually really excited about this one because I recently uh, fractured my ankle. I think I actually had a boot on the last time I was here, so I'm out of my boot. 
but I have a freshly fractured healing fibula here. So this is a really great thing to do about two months after an acute injury. So I am cleared to do that now. All right, so the first part of what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the medium sized blue ball and you're gonna pick a foot. It doesn't matter which foot, you're gonna do both feet. And first you're gonna take that medium sized blue ball, put it under your foot. Oh, and by the way, you are seated for this. You're gonna wanna sit down and make sure that you can get both feet flat on the floor. Also, I have a yoga mat down here because after I do this, if I feel it up higher, I may then wanna get down on the floor and like do some stretches to kind of get into those places. So if you've got the extra time, that's a nice little addition. But we're just gonna do the feet for now. So I have the blue ball, which is kind of hard to see against the this uh, yoga mat here, but I have the blue ball under my foot and I'm just gonna roll it with medium to uh, moderate to uh, significant pressure. I'm gonna roll it up and down from the inside to the outside of my foot. Now for those who are following along, go really slow up and down from the inside to the middle to the outside. And you want to be on bare feet as ideal, but you can wear socks if you need to. So after you've rolled up and down one time on the inside, one time in the middle, one time on the outside, then you're gonna go back through again the inside to the middle to the outside and on the second time around you're gonna pick a spot that feels important I want you to focus either on the pinky toe side or the big toe side because of those larger muscle groups I spoke about so roll up and down until you find an important spot on the inside or the outside I'm feeling a spot right about there underneath. Once you find that spot, you're gonna take the black ball and switch it out, making sure that it's touching on that important spot. And you're gonna come down all the way on the black ball. At this point, you want to place your hands on your knees or even your elbows on your knees and press down a little bit. Now, if you have this rad bell set, you want to press down until you feel kind of an activation of sorts. And that's why it's important to have one of this density. You don't want it to be too um, soft. Then this is where the work begins. You're going to hold this for a good three minutes, taking slow breaths in. And out, come back to your center. So you can do that little postural hack even from sitting. Take a slow breath in, raise your eyebrows up. Slow breath out, tuck your chin slightly just to sit back. Pinch your shoulder blades a little, tuck your pelvis a little. And then bring your awareness down to the pressure of that ball. This is truly where the work begins because I had mentioned that we use slow sustained pressure over an extended period of time. So you want to be with this for a good three to five minutes. Now I only have an, a couple minutes left so we're not going to stay with this too long. But when you're doing this on your own, play some music in the background and spend three to five minutes just on that one spot. And remember, it's an important spot that you assessed with the larger ball. It's not exactly the same spot I have. It's either on the inside or outside based on what came up for you. You're gonna do this for about three to five minutes, listening to music in the background. Please don't set a timer. It puts you in the wrong headspace. You wanna be in the more natural, flowy, creative state like fascia. And anytime your mind wanders, come back to the pressure of the ball. Take a breath into the pressure of the ball and ask, where can I let go while still holding on in this position? 
See if you can let go through your shin, your knee, your hip. And once you do that, you may be surprised how far up you feel it. So three to five minutes here, then you're going to lighten your pressure, come to the opposite side of the foot. So for me, it'll be the inside. Then you're gonna roll up and down again and find a second important spot. If you can remember the spot from the bigger blue ball, great. If not, just roll on the smaller ball. You've already opened up the fascial webbing, so you should be more sensitive to this. So once you find that second spot, you can hang out there. Again, three to five minutes on the inside, play some music, ask where can I let go in this position while still holding on for support. You're still pressing in with your elbows or your hands to apply pressure leaning forward slightly. So you can see me here leaning forward a little, but you do take a deep breath in, raise your eyebrows up, tuck your chin and your shoulder blades and sit back at the same time. So after you've done three to five minutes on one side, three to five minutes on the other side, you're then gonna switch and go back to the other leg. Start from step one, take the larger ball again, put it under your feet, roll on the inside, middle, outside with moderate to significant pressure, and then go back and do it again. On the second time around, go slower and feel for an important spot, either on the inside or the outside. Once you hit that important spot, see if you can stay on it and kind of put the ball there and then come down onto it. Lean into it with your elbows or your hands. Sit back into your center, use that postural hack. And then take a slow breath in, ask where can I let go? Bring all your awareness into the pressure of the ball. Anytime you feel distracted, come back to the pressure of the ball. Use music to stay with it for three minutes on this side, then three minutes on the other side. Then you're finished. As far as, um, the do's and don'ts of this, there really are no what's called contraindications. You're free to treat most any part of the foot, so say the hand, my hand is my foot, pretty much any part of the foot is fair game. I would just mostly try to stay off of the heel because as you saw in the diagram, there's not much going on there anyway. It's largely bone. So, and you wanna predominantly focus on the inside and the outside stay off of heel, and then you're kind of in the therapeutic zone. All right, enjoy that. And if you have any questions, you know where to find me. I think I'm about out of time here, so let's see. No questions in the chat. All right. Thank, thank you, Niall. You're welcome, dear. All right, it's time for Sage. Thank you. Uh, can you guys hear me well enough? Yes, clear as a bell. Okay, outstanding, because I'm going to take these earbuds off then. Makes it a little bit easier. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. And glad that you could join me here at the National Arboretum. Right now, I am at the uh, Springhouse Run. Um, it's a small little creek where I'm next to uh, that they're trying to redo, or that I have redone, I should say. It's an urban uh, stream that runs through the National Arboretum. Close to the... Uh, you guys hear that frog? You guys hear that frog? <laughs> yes, I did. Okay, okay. I just wanted, I'm just trying to see how far what you, what you guys can pick up on this. Act. So we're going to do a bit of forest bathing for the time that we've got remaining. And I don't know if you've, any of you have been on this before with us, or maybe this is your first time. So either way, welcome or welcome back. Um, so what we could do is if we could just tap into our senses, and Niall's actually kind of set that stage already, dare I say, because uh, I've been feeling kind of soothed and relaxed just listening to her voice as, as, this, as she explained the fascia. But if we could do that now, and get yourself into a comfortable spot, whether you're sitting down, whether you're standing, hopefully no one's driving. Um, but go ahead and either bring your focus to a soft gaze, if you can, or just go ahead and close your eyes. We'll take a nice gentle deep breath as we tap into our senses. And 
just by using our ears. I'm wondering what sounds you can pick up, whether in my background or in your background. And again, nice gentle deep breath. Now let's tap into the sense of smell. Perhaps where you are, there may be an odor. The smell of your house or your office. Perhaps the smell of your kitchen or your bedroom. And again, nice gentle deep breath. Now let's focus in on our sense of touch. The sensations that our skin picks up. With no judgment, just an observation. Perhaps the coolness of the air conditioning. Perhaps the weight of your clothing. And again, nice gentle deep breath. Now let's bring our focus to our sense of sight. And if you'd like, you can look into the screen or perhaps outdoors, perhaps out a window, just to see a view of nature. Just enjoying that simplicity and beauty that is before you. And again, nice gentle deep breath. And what we'll do now is observe what's in the screen or perhaps observing what is outside of your window, or if even if you're outside, observing what is before you. Just observe what is in motion, what you're able to notice. Now, if anyone would like to share what they noticed of what was in motion, perhaps we can put that in chat. So if you could raise your hand, let's see what's in there, what responses we have. Anyone to share what they noticed or what they observed in motion? What I'm seeing here on my end is a bunch of dragonflies hovering about, as well as bubbles coming up from the creek. Clouds in the reflection of the water, sometimes over the water. Mm -hmm. 
So thank you for sharing. So for this next invitation, what I have you do is if you could grab a pen and a paper, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is write a haiku. If you're not familiar with a haiku, it's a Japanese poem with only three lines. The first line with five syllables, the second with seven syllables, and the fifth with, or the, excuse me, the third with five syllables as well. So it's a five, seven, five syllable setup of three lines. So we'll take a few moments, just looking at, again, the screen, be inspired by nature that is before us. Or if you, again, if you're outside, if you would like to look out your window, just observing in your green space as an inspiration to write this haiku. I'll give you a few moments. Do not worry about the time. I'll keep track of that. And I'll let you know our time is coming close to the end with just the sound of a rattle to wrap it up. So go ahead and become inspired. So hopefully you heard that rattle as our time comes to an end to finish up on our haikus. And if anyone would like to share that haiku, feel free to do so by raising your hand or perhaps putting it into the chat. I'll read a couple before we move on, if anyone would like to do that. So I'll open it up or you can unmute yourself so we can hear the sound of your lovely voice. Would anyone care to start us off? I'll go ahead and start us off if we're feeling a bit shy. And what I have here is, this also gives you time to finish up your haiku if you need a few more seconds. My haiku goes as follows. Dragonflies hovers, still ripples hug root ball aisle. Loud croaking bullfrog.
check our chats to see if anyone put something in. A uh, long branch of maple. Uh, long branch of maple. Perfect gym for playful squirrel. Dog watches and sings. Thank you, Monica. I like that. Floor is open if anyone else would like to share. Okay. And Monica says the maple is outside my window and it's my beagle who sings at all squirrels. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Sings is a wonderful way of putting it. <laughs> I used to have a, well, she was a half beagle and half Australian shepherd. Her, her singing was a bit different, but yes, still lovely. <laughs> so we have a few more minutes before our time comes to an end. And I would like to just do more, two more things. One, to bring you all to what's another sense of stillness. And again, you can look either into the screen or out into nature of your window and seeing your green space around you. And what I'm going to do is rattle for a few minutes before this comes to an end. And so go ahead and get yourself nice and relaxed, comfortable, whether you want to sit with your eyes open or in a soft gaze, or if you just want to kind of stare off into the nothingness. Again, let's go ahead and take a ge nice, gentle, deep breath. And as you exhale, just slowly sink into serenity. You're coming in and out, Sage. Oh, I'm coming in and out. Okay, I'll project my voice this way. I thought I was just a few inches away, but I'm still, I guess, a foot or so far away. But I just wanted to finish finish off our forest bathing experience with, um, as you can see, I have three cups here. But they look, they may look like shot glasses, but they're not. They're tea cups. And what I have here is some tea that I do want to share with each of you. And I do have three cups. Because 
one of these cups represents everybody in Zoom land. For all of you that are joining, this cup is for you. If you have a drink, by all means, pick it up and hold it up. So for each of you, I wanna say thank you for joining us here today. Let me put that one down. That leaves two cups. This one's mine. <laughs> and this second cup is for our host, for our hostess. Our, I am not the host nor the hostess. I'm just a guide. This green space where I'm at here at the National Arboretum is our hostess. But not only the National Arboretum, because they are the stewards, the current stewards of this land, but also for the indigenous stewards of this land, Scataway and the Anacostia tribes. I do want to honor and acknowledge them. And most importantly, also not to be forgotten, but always remembered is our descendants, the future stewards of the green spaces that we enjoy, where we recreate, where we commune, and where we have fun. So this is for our hostess with the most this <laughs> green space and all. I just pour this out. And now for my shots and to each of you, again, thank you very much for joining us today. And, thank you, Sage. Oh, you're welcome. And if anyone's wondering, the tea that I have is a, uh, what is it? Lion's mane with rose hip and spearmint extract from uh, this company called Fresh Caps. So lovely tea, it's meant for focus. Lion's mane is very good for you. Mm -hmm. And gang, just so you know, we're going to have um, a conference on fungi, the health benefits, um, and that, of course, will include talking about lion's mane next February. We don't have a date yet. We're still in the planning stages, but um, it's just serendipitous that that's what you're drinking, and that's what I've been working on this week. Oh, that's so awesome. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to, to when that happens. Um, make sure before we go that you look at the lovely haikus in the chat window. Oh. I think folks dropped one or two more. Oh, okay. Yes, let's actually or do that. I don't know if we have three. time or not. <laughs> But okay, what I, what I will do is I will um, cut and paste the, the haikus and put them in our, our after uh, event email, everybody, okay? Oh, please, please. Thank you very much. I'd appreciate that. That's so lovely. You're welcome. Niall, thank you. Ashley had to leave us because she's going to do some continuing education because she needs to stay up to date on long COVID since she's running um, the GW Center for Integrative Medicine's um, long COVID clinic. Uh, but I know you all appreciate her as much as I do. Um, with that said, have a beautiful weekend. Get out. It's a glorious day today. And um, be safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome.